Thank you, everybody. For thank you, everyone, for joining the GSA Communication SIG Ideas Showcase. Uh, today's program is going to be kind of fun, a little bit more informal than perhaps we're normally used to. Uh, you know, on some of these programs. My name is Jacob Wilder. CAE. I am the uh, Senior Director of Operations and Communications with the Building Owners and Managers Association of Georgia. That is a mouthful. Um, and uh, currently serve as the Chair of the Communication SIG. I'm joined by uh, Dan Curran, who is my Vice Chair. Dan, say hello. Hey, everybody. <laughs> And uh, we are so appreciative to the members of the Communication SIG, the Tech Ninjas, and the other GSAE members who have joined us for uh, today's program. Uh, the purpose of today's program is just to engage in ideation. So while we have some topics pre-selected that we're hoping that you like, they're meant to get you thinking either about them or about other topics, ideas, and things that you can bring back uh, to your associations, to your businesses, to your companies. And we aren't limited by these topics that uh, we have pre-selected and are discussing today. So I want to invite everybody on the call to be curious, uh, push back on ideas, uh, improve ideas that have been shared, and then uh, consider their application for your own association and businesses and communications. Um, so our pre-selected topics today uh, are going to be focusing on learning management systems with Amy Kane at ABC of Georgia. Uh, then it's going to come back to me for a little bit for a discussion of communication tools, methodologies, uh, just some ideas to spark interest. And then wrapping it up is going to be a section on SMS messaging with David Thomas uh, with Member Text. We're so grateful for him uh, coming through in the clutch and uh, jumping in last minute to uh, share his ideas with us. Um, first and foremost, though, uh, let's keep today's program interactive while we're presenting. Uh, just, you know, we'll stay on mute, um, but feel free to go ahead and start using the chat to pose questions, to note ideas, and we can come back and visit those at the end of the program. And then um, also uh, at the end of the program, there's going to be a period for open dialogue and asking those questions. Uh, and continuing to share new ideas that uh, we might have as we continue to explore how to make our communications uh, and everything more effective for uh, our associations and businesses. Um, and then, uh, you know, let, let's go in with the idea of iron sharpens iron. And today, I hope that we can uh, forge new and improved processes uh, for our associations and for our businesses. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Amy Kane, who's going to uh, explore learning management systems with us. So, Thanks, Jacob. Hey, everyone. Can you all hear me okay? I'm good. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks for inviting me, Jacob. Um, my name is Amy Kane. I know um, most of you here, but um, I work at um, Associated Builders and Contractors of Georgia. Um, I'm a little confused on my job title right now. I'm Vice President of Education, Safety, and Operations, but I did just hire someone to do more of the education and safety, so I'm kind of moving into more marketing and operations now. So I'm excited to be involved in the communication SIG with GSAE because I, I never really have been a part of that, but I feel like with my new role, this might be a really good resource group um, for me as well. So thanks for inviting me today. Um, so Jacob invited me to share a little bit about learning management systems. Um, so when he asked me, I said, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I think I have a story that I can share my experience. So hopefully it'll be valuable and um, good for you guys. So I'm going to share my screen with a few little slides I threw together. As Jacob mentioned, like I'd love for interaction, questions, interrupt as we go, whatever. I'm going to share a few slides and then I'm actually going to show you guys um, the back end of our system. Um, just to give you a little feel for it. So let's see. All right. Oh, that's all my email. Okay. Here we go. I'm also trying slides in Canva, which is kind of fun instead of um, PowerPoint, but there's some fun different functions there. So um, oh, let's see. Present. Okay. Y'all can see this? Awesome. Okay, so so you want an LMS? What you need to know is the title that uh, that Jacob uh, presented me with. 
Um, a little bit here, this is just a straight up Wikipedia definition of an LMS, um, but most of you probably are familiar with the term. It's one of the many acronyms in association management, um, but or in business in general, it's not just a system for associations actually. But um, so learning management system is a software application for administration, documentation, tracking, reporting, automation, and delivery of educational courses, training programs, materials or learning and development programs. So I think a lot of um, like corporations use these for um, employee training. Um, large corporations use kind of learning management systems for that. But in associations, they've become super popular for um, providing educational content to members. And um, I thought the last point on here was, was definitely relevant, just how um, COVID-19 really um, was a huge growth for LMSs. I think everyone who had thought about having one decided they needed one. And I'll, I'll dig into that a little bit too. But um, so I actually started, um, I worked at the American College of Rheumatology. Um, hey, Robin, you know, who's on the call for uh, about 12 years. And um, that's a big national association. We had 100 plus staff and members all over the country. And um, we had a, a complex learning management system and a complex, an IT team that really helped us navigate it all. So they, it was pretty fun how working with these people on the back end who could code everything, I could say, I want a button there. Can you add a button there? Um, and I, I wanted to do this. And then they worked their magic behind the scenes and I could work with them on that. Um, so, so that was a lot of fun. So that was my background with learning management systems was, was kind of that view. And then um, about two and a half years ago, I went over to ABC of Georgia. So um, we're Associated Builders and Contractors of Georgia. We're a chapter um, of a national association. We have a much smaller staff of seven people um, and we had no sort of LMS, um, but we did have a, a goal. So they, they credit to the board before, as, before I came in, they were thinking ahead and they had a strategic goal that was to remain relevant by identifying and continuously implementing technology and other platforms to effectively communicate across generational preferences. So they knew we had to do something. They just didn't know exactly what, what we were gonna do. And um, so I came in and I kind of knew this was a goal, but wasn't sure when I was gonna do it or how, what we were gonna do. But it, it was, I got hired in March of 2020. So it actually was like, okay, this is something that has to happen ASAP. Um, so we had to jump in and figure something out. So um, it actually was a blessing, I mean, not a blessing in disguise, but it, it was nice how it kind of made this a priority for the organization and not an uphill battle for me to say, we need this, we need people on board. You know, everyone was like, yes, do whatever you need to make this happen. So I did a lot of playing around. Um, trying to read everything I could on different options out there. Um, I honestly would like down, I mean, I probably maybe five or six things like got little free trials and would play with them and just tried to find something that would work. And um, I was a, a little daunted by the fact that I'd come from this big organization where we built out this huge thing. And I was like, okay, we're nowhere near, we don't even have this in the budget. Like, what am I gonna do? Um, but I found a lot of things out there. And like I said, trial, error, just played around with them ended up with one um, called Teachable. And two and a half years later, we're still using Teachable. I am pretty happy with it. Um, it's not the end all be all perfect solution and I'll dig into that in a minute, but um, overall, I really like it. It's working for our needs right now. Um, why I like it, um, it's easy to use for learners and staff, super important um, for me and my team to be able to do everything we can on the back end and then for our learners who um, are all over the place in construction, people that are you know, out on the job sites, so superintendents, and then CEOs of large construction companies. So I wanted something easy for people to use. Um, I really like how it's branded ABC. So some of the other ones that I played around with, it was a little bit more like, it didn't look like a product of my organization. And um, I, you're able to really like add in all your colors and your logos and things like that in this. So I, I like that. Um, and then um, this acronym DOPE um, 
it is develop once, publish everywhere. So I think that's just an LMS in general. What I love about it is that I can have a class um, in person. I can record it. I can post it in here. I can resell it. People can can purchase it um, moving forward. So it's like doing something once and then being able to keep using it over and over again. So let's check it out. I'm going to um, pull up Teachable now for you. Um, hold on. All right, you guys can see this still? Do you see my, okay. Or what do you see? Do you see this like future leaders on the left? Okay, great. Um, okay, so this is our school is what Teachable calls it. And these are all the things over the past two and a half years that I've kind of built out in here. Um, just a quick scan through. I've got a variety of different programs in here. Um, the one, the thing that we've used it the most for are some of our series. Like I'm gonna click on future leaders to show you this. This is a nine month professional development series that we do for like emerging leaders um, in our field. And let's see. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of turned into their, their hub that they use for the duration of the program. Um, hold on, I'm gonna go in right here to show you their view. Um, this is my back end view here, but I can go in and see exactly what everything looks like as a student. And I just want to show you that real quick. Um, preview as a student. So here I post with each session, I'll post instructions for live stream. So there's not a live stream platform built into this, or maybe there is, and I don't use it, but I use um, I use Zoom um, in here. So I just put a link to, I put the details for how to access Zoom in here. Um, and then I'll post the handouts um, prior to each session in here. Um, I'll post the evaluation. I love this. It's got a, I can embed, um, let's see, hold on. That one doesn't want to do it. Come on. I'm bragging about it. I don't know why that's not pulling up. Like I like, oh, there it is. It's way down there for some weird reason. I don't know why. It normally doesn't look like that, but um, you can embed Survey Monkey into here. So it's kind of cool how it's just right, right built into there. Um, and then I can post the videos after each session. So I record these in Zoom um, as the meeting's going on, and then I just upload them. Um, do a little bit of simple video editing to edit out breaks and everything. Um, and I publish them in here. I'm gonna pause. Questions, comments? Uh, yes, I actually had a question, Amy. Yeah, what's up? Uh, so can Teachable or other programs similar to Blue Sky and other LMS be integrated or embedded directly into a website? Hmm. Um, I don't know the answer. Does anyone know? This is a good brainstorm. <laughs> I bet they can't. I mean, I know like some, I mean, I'm thinking of a some of these platforms that are like all in one, like where your AMS, it's your AMS, it's your LMS, and it's your website. So I'm sure those have that functionality, right? Like um, those could do it there, but I don't know. I mean, I'm on like a WordPress website that I manage. I don't know how I would do that online, but there, there probably is a way. It's just a little more complicated. But I definitely think if you go for a solution that's like an all-in-one AMS, LMS website, then that would have that functionality. Um, Amy, it's Wendy. I feel as if member clicks, when they purchase their last LMS that mm -hmm. Florida Society is using, um, we have not gone down that path yet. But I do think you're right that that for member clicks, I think you can do some embedding um, within the site. But I also I'd love to hear from Kelly how Novi is talking to Blue Sky once we're done with this this part of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm gonna. I know these are rapid fire presentations, so I only have a few more minutes. So I'm gonna just go to my last slide, and then we can chat more uh, about it as we want. But 
challenges just wanted to throw out there. I mean, like I said, we've been using it for two and a half years. It's meeting all of our needs um, pretty much for now. A few things I thought of, use by learners. I mean, like I showed you, I put in the Zoom link and all the materials and I still get maybe like three people before there's 50 people in that future leaders program, the morning of the class, they're like, can you send me the login? Can you send me this? I'm like, it's all right there for all nine months. Um, so people just adopting to using it is challenging. Um, single sign-on, so we don't have it integrated with our AMS. And honestly, our we don't have a lot of use by members of our AMS anyway. So, I mean, they use it for the most basic things to register for things when they have to, but um, it, so, so this is something, the way I set up logins for this, I just use their email and I set up a super basic password and I provide that to them in advance. So, and I have like the same password for everyone. So then when, when they ask me, how do I log in? I'm like, it's your email and ABC 24 to, you know, something basic. Um, payment, there are, there is opportunities to charge for classes within Teachable, but I have not explored that too much yet. Um. So that's something right now I don't, I couldn't offer a class and have people pay and just something I haven't done yet. And then um, developing content specific for LMS. So that's something I'd love to see us do more moving forward, but we haven't really yet is like sit down and record a session that's gonna be posted as an online class versus everything we're doing now is like in-person first and then let's tweak it for, to be available online. But I think my most of my instructors are still are not quite at that point either. They're they're not wanting to record content for an online module. Um, but I'll get them there, I think, one day. Um, so final thoughts. Um, I was trying to bring it back communication wise um, for the SIG, but an LMS I think um, can definitely streamline your member communications related to your educational content. Everything in one place versus you know, here are the handouts for the class, here's the evaluation, here's the recording, you know, it's just go to Teachable, everything's there. Um, there are a lot of options out there, so play around, like I said, um, that's my final point, don't be scared to try, even if it's on a small scale to start. So um, look at the options, see what kind of little free trials, if you can do one little class, um, doesn't have to be super big and daunting. So that's what I got for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. I have so many questions. <laughs> I'm saving them to the end, and I hope everybody else is as well. Uh, I'll just say this before we transition to the next presentation uh, that, you know, I, I always laugh when uh, members, you know, reach out and say, what's my password? What's, you know, how do you sign in? And I'm always like, do you call Amazon when you get locked on your Amazon account? <laughs> you know, so that's always fun. But thank you so much, Amy, for sharing. Yeah, uh, and I'm happy to, to like dig in if anyone wants to know more beyond this call too. I'm always happy to to chat on the phone later too, or email. Absolutely. I'm going to make the uh, same offer for mine because I'm going very high level, which Wendy knows I do not like to do. I love to get into the nitty gritty, but I'm forcing myself to stay on time with time slides today. So um, I just wanted to uh, talk briefly about some communication tools and methods for organizing, personalizing, and reaching your audience. Uh, this is not a comprehensive list. This is uh, by no means uh, going to be uh, ground shaking, uh, blow your mind type of stuff. It could be, but I don't have the time. Um, but even for those of you who find this repetitive or you're already using it, just encouraging you to see how it gets used by another association and then, um, you know, apply that in any perhaps wisdom or nuggets, if one can impart that, uh, send it your way. So um, the first thing that I want to encourage us to think about is building your communications ecosystem. We all have our own communications ecosystem. It can include a lot of different tools. Uh, this is not, again, a comprehensive list that you see on the screen, but we think about all the different tools and uh, perhaps even our CAE study informs us that we should scan, plan, implement, evaluate, and we can look at our communications tools within that framework going from data that it's in our database and then being able to apply it into how we communicate uh, with our members. And so I'm going to share some of those cool tools 
uh, as we move through them. And like I said, some of them won't be groundbreaking uh, for you, but maybe perhaps have you thinking about them in a slightly different way. So, you know, trying to hit that first uh, area of your scan plan, implement, evaluate, scanning and planning, being able to organize your data. Um, one of the best things that you can do is be able to take the data out of your uh, database. Um, so that's exporting it out of your AMS or your primary database, or maybe even perhaps it's your email platforms database of, of records. And then being able to tailor that data to your needs. Now, um, most folks might know that I'm a big fan of Airtable, but you can do this in Excel or programs like Smartsheet. Um, and what you ultimately want to be able to do is customize those fields in the way that you want to be able to report it and ultimately be able to share it. So that might include being able to provide the right data to the right people for your staff, your volunteers and committee members, and perhaps vendors that you're working with on a program. So being able to share data without compromising it uh, in your actual database and working with it and so that it's easily accessible is key. And then one other thing that I always encourage folks to do is learn your shortcuts for all of these programs, whatever program you end up deciding to use, and consider spending a little bit of time learning uh, the native tools and applications like Microsoft Excel, Word. They have some great resources just baked into them. Uh, one of my favorite ones, I can't get into all of them, is being able to just dedupe your records uh, in Excel and using conditional formatting to find, maybe it's your member ID and uh, it highlights because now there are records in there twice or an email. Um, but just being able to sort through that data is um, you know, key. Then we get to the ah uh, design portion. Again, this isn't groundbreaking stuff. Many of you, and we saw it with Amy. Amy's using Canva. We use Adobe Express just because it's baked into our Adobe platform. But being able to design uh, fast uh, with tools like these, uh, being you know pressed for time uh, and being able to generate good looking content quickly. Uh, I'm not a graphic designer, but uh, Adobe Express and Canva allow me to do that. Use templates to be able to generate uh, your program graphics faster. Personalize it with member photos. Uh, that's not always possible, but members love to see themselves. So when you are using photos, you know, use member photos. And then finally, less is more. Uh, that applies on so many uh, levels. Um, attention spans are short. People don't read your email in its entirety. Uh, they are often viewing it on a mobile device. Um, and so they don't have time to go through and look at everything. So just a few things on design. Uh, one of my favorite hacks uh, when you feel like maybe your mass email system uh, isn't working, whether that's MailChimp or we use Informs on our end, is personalizing it using email merge. Um, so there's a process by which you can take your data out from an Excel spreadsheet, uh, type up your message in Word, and then send it via Outlook. And it can look highly personalized to your end user. Um, you can even go into that data set and be able to type in personal messages that go to some members so they feel like, oh, Jacob really is communicating with me. And uh, I did it this morning to remind some folks that they do need to sign up for our upcoming uh, lunches that we have for our members. Uh, and folks really appreciate that. And uh, it's a fairly easy process if you'd like to learn more about it. We use it to great effect here when we just need to cut through that clutter and get our members to take action. There's some things that you have to watch out for when doing it too, so you don't end up in a spam filter. Finally, when we talk about like reaching your audience, there's some uh, data sets that you wanna pay attention to. What's your delivery rate? What's your open rate? What's your click rate? Um, heat maps, click maps, uh, or what they're also called. Where are folks clicking on your email communications? A lot of tools like MailChimp. Uh, again, like I said, we use Informs, Constant Contact. They'll be able to tell you where folks are clicking. Um, your bounce rates, and then of course your unsubscribes. Who ended up on that list? Why did they end up on that list? Was it a mistake? Why are they continuing to bounce? Do they need their email in a different format? Uh, with the heat maps, 
uh, and looking at where folks are clicking, you're seeing, are they actually scrolling all the way down the email? Um, and then being able to utilize that to uh, craft more effective email communications. One thing that I did recently was in our new member recruitment campaigns, I actually went and looked and see who opened the email. And I followed up with them personally. Uh, and that has yielded a lot of success with getting those members to have a conversation and join. One of the other things that we like to do is being able to actually collect data. One of the best tools that I have found is JotForm, but that's not to say you can't use Microsoft Forms or Google Forms to collect things like registrations, sponsor signups, award entries. Uh, Owen can tell you more about that. Maybe we'll have some time. Uh, collecting member feedback or uh, sponsor details about what they're doing. Uh, Owen, I was thinking about our uh, menu that we use for the sports outing. Um, or, you know, that annual communication that we have. Hey, make sure your directory listing is up to date and folks can update that data and make sure that it gets communicated back. So, uh, Consider a tool like JotForm because it's more expansive than uh, maybe Microsoft Forms or Google Forms, and maybe there's even other platforms out there. That's just one of the best ones that I've found to use, and there's so many plugins for it. One of the things that can often be difficult for us as communication professionals is actually finding the time to craft and send the email. Um, and something that I've been playing around with recently and want to continue to explore is triggered email campaigns to get folks to convert, to do what you want them to do, whether that's register, whether that's donate, whether that's go to read something. And uh, platforms like MailChimp, um, the little graphic that you see in the background there is our inform system. That's how you get to lay it out, but you'll tell it, hey, I want you to wait a certain amount of days, then I want you to send an email, then I want to see if they opened it. If they opened it, do this. If they didn't open it, do this. Send them another message and wait and keep them on this campaign until they take the desired action. Uh, the one that you see here is uh, reminding folks that, hey, you made a pledge to donate and we haven't received it yet. And you're going to stay on this communication campaign until either one, you make it on the donors list or two, uh, you just time out and don't respond to anything. So uh, you can set those up. And then going back to my idea of templates, be able to just recreate that template and tailor it uh, each year for the same use and get folks to take the action uh, that you need and get that conversion. Finally, when you reach that final stage of SPY and you're evaluating, we should always do that with our communications, utilizing tools like Excel. Again, me, I prefer Airtable, but be able to review the results of the campaign, see if anything needs to be updated, mine it for any actionable information, uh, whether that might be a likely donor or a likely member. Uh, if things need to get updated, clean that data. And then as part of your ongoing process, and hopefully you're doing this with your association is making sure that database is protected and only one or two, a very limited number of folks can actually make a record update uh, in your uh, database. And that information that has been brought out of the database can then come back in through that one person to make sure that it's correct. So um, always take time to evaluate at the end. And that's going to wrap it up for me. I'll uh, go ahead and stop my share and invite David to go ahead and uh, share a little bit more with us about SMS messaging. And David, I don't know if you're still on mute. Yeah. Yep. Can there you hear me go. now? Sorry about that. Um, everyone should be able to see my screen now. No. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, well, uh, yeah, thanks everybody for having me. Um, Amy uh, and I uh, spoke in, uh, about a week ago and we actually um, have another one of the associations in, um, uh, in her industry that uh, uses us um, just to communicate with their uh, members and um, what's I'm going to run through a little bit about us and then just talk about texting in general. 
Um, and of course, um, if you have questions afterwards, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm happy to jump on a call and learn a little bit more about your um, your association or chapter or organization and speak to uh, just the power of text and um, not just what's been working well for us, but what's been working for our customers and, um, and our organizations and um, where we kind of fall in between um, your traditional uh, platform that does have a texting component at verse um, someone like us who's a standalone software that we do have an open API. We are able to plug into other softwares, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of the softwares um, in terms of like the CRMs um, or just uh, uh, your your backend databases don't necessarily um, accept the, the Zapier API. So um, someday though, uh, hopefully. Um, but we, uh, we've been around since 2017, and we have primarily focused our um, platform and our outreach and what we've built uh, in the membership space. So as opposed to um, just taking any business or reaching out to any business, any local business, any retail store, um, we've just found a lot of success with membership-based organizations. Um, and, now, and that has led us to uh, some really great um, customers who are larger scale organizations using us for to communicate just for HR or um, uh, to uh, reach out to uh, one in one example, uh, we have a large um, uh, plasma center that uses us. They have 26 locations and uh, they send out reminders about uh, people's appointments and when they can come and donate blood. Um, so we've, you know, in our membership based concept, we've, we've, come across a lot of different use cases. Um, and I have, uh, you know, I know we're, I'm 10 slides in 10 minutes, but I don't want to count that first one. So um, I'm going to buzz you through a few things here just to kind of open up the, um, again, a little bit more about us, but just the use cases um, as, as I'll get into them. And um, Jacob actually did send me over a uh, an email with some good questions. And if I don't hit all of those, I'm happy to type out some responses and um, and you guys can share that internally. Um, I do like to talk about our customer base because we have 750 organizations um, and we really got started with private country clubs. So we have about 550 clubs that range from your private clubs to city clubs, yacht clubs. Um, and then uh, we have about 100 chamber of commerces and then um, 150 or so other organizations and, um, and associations. And uh, again, this membership-based concept is what's really worked out really well. Well for us, but part of the reason is you're putting your faith in someone who uh, is going to have access to your member, you know, mobile numbers, and um, so we don't resell, reuse any information for any reason. Um, it's in the privacy policy on our website, um, and so I think like with some of the other softwares out there, you don't necessarily get that one line there at the end of your privacy policy. Just states that um, there's a lot of you know, other color around that. Um, but for us, it's pretty simple. Um, so we've, we've sort of built up this faith in our, in our customer base and that's led us to a lot of referrals. Um, but we really got started with just this, these threats to our promotional tools. I know, um, we've been talking a little bit today about email and, uh, MailChimp and MailShake and just how, um, and looking at open rates, um, we're not, we, we don't necessarily say that we're going to revamp your email process or your communication process. Um, but having the capacity to text and is what makes text powerful. Um, if you can't send a text, then, um, you know, you're not sending text, but you might be doing so one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, with somebody um, where you might be have a small group of people um, in an iMessage group that you're communicating with that's relevant to an association or um, even 10 people in an iMessage slash green uh Android situation where you might end up with a couple of different chats. Um, these messages are outbound from you to people who have opted into the platform. So um, what's worked well for us is creating this urgency, talking about urgency and realizing that your email flow is not going to change that much. But once you've sent out a couple of emails about one thing in particular, and you're not getting the response that you want or the event or the um, last minute piece of information is tomorrow uh, and you want to get something out and quickly, um, that's where text is is really just the best and, and there isn't much to compete with it right now. Um, the numbers on texting are phenomenal, 98% read rates, three minute average time to open. So what we really know is that if people are opted into the program, um, they are seeing the information and that's really the, the most powerful thing. 
Um, a lot of the texts that we see go out, um, really like almost all of them are just about the one thing that you're texting about. So if you think about your emails, um, sometimes your email is going to have the body and the subject are going to be about the same thing, but then you'll have something in the columns or underneath that um, have additional information or a reminder about something else. And uh, the call to action in the text is the most important thing because you a little bit different than email where you're going to see open rates, you know, days down the road. Well, you don't know that they necessarily saw it in time unless you go look at the time of open. Um, with text, I'll tell you right now, I don't expect people to respond or um, send you or, or click on your link um, 10, 12 hours later, because uh, think about how we use our phones and, you know, you're rarely going to go scrolling through all your messages, you know, at the end of the day to just see what you might have missed out on. Um, the goal here is to get people to click on that link in that moment when they see the message. And you may not need something like this for every single piece of information. Um, and again, I know it sounds like a broken record, but having the capacity to do it um, is what makes this really powerful. Um, functionality wise and what makes a difference between um, just us, but also really any text platform that you're evaluating, or if your current software has a texting component, I heard member clicks. I know some chambers that we work with use member clicks, but I don't believe that they have a texting component. Uh, don't quote me, but I don't think that they do. Um, but really, our bread and butter has been uh, implementing a process with our organizations that is easy and um, really simple to use. So um, we encourage th that uh, the members text in directly on their own from their phones, as opposed to you adding them, which you absolutely can do. Um, but they can also add themselves just by texting into the code. So when they text into the code, uh, they get a text back from the system that says, thanks for joining the program. You'll get a few texts to personalize your experience and let them know they can opt out. Well, we can set up a follow up to go in between these two messages that just says, you know, please respond with your first name, last name, comma, company. And so now you'll know who that person is. And you can see if somebody texted in and doesn't, and they don't respond with that name. Um, and then after that, you can send out a text and this can be timed. So it could be the next day, a couple of days later, where you offer uh, different interest groups or segments that people can opt into to get more information. So I like using the club amenities. I think it makes it very obvious, but what you have on the left is your groups. And on the bottom right, you have your keywords that people can use to opt into those groups. And so just depending on your structure of your organization, you may not have a keyword for every single group, um, but you might actually use um, a keyword to encourage people to opt in to get more information about your organization. Um, so maybe you're even promoting the keyword on um, for outside of your membership, or uh, maybe it's your board group and you don't need a keyword. You just want to upload a list to the board uh, group. Um, the, the keywords uh, can bring a lot of power, um, especially if you're doing something where you're inviting people that are not typically the people you communicate with, but you'd like to be able to provide them more information, um, you could create a new keyword anytime. And that's really one of our differentiators um, from a functionality standpoint is most of the backend databases that have a texting component. Um, it's likely a just one text to the large scale group that you of phone numbers that you have. Um, whereas with us, you can break out as many of these groups as you'd like, as many keywords, you can text a segment of those groups, you can uh, set up. And my favorite one lately with the chambers has been that Zoom example that um, I think it was Jacob that you just used. Um, or maybe Amy, you said it at the end. Um, it, it's four o'clock here. So I'm, I'm starting to lose it. Um, no, I, uh, you mentioned the zoom and how people reach out five minutes before five minutes after, I mean, literally the calendar link is sitting in their calendar it, or the zoom link is in the calendar invite it's in their email and they're still reaching out to you asking for it. Um, so you could schedule a recurring message with the same zoom link, uh, to go out to everybody, you know, at this day and time every month or, you know, every week, if it's a weekly meeting. Um, so, you know, if you think about the scale at what's possible here, um, we have surveys functionality where you can send out, uh, survey questions. This is great for feedback beyond just simply, um, feedback. It can also just be engaging if you're doing an in-person event or a zoom meeting and you want people to respond with, um, uh, uh, just being engaging on live in a meeting, um, you could showcase those responses. Um, and we can ask follow-up questions based on each individual response. So it doesn't have to be that the person who responds with number one would get the same response for number four. 
Uh, we do have an appointments module as well. And um, I really like this for not just your appointments, like you're going to the doctor, but also um, you're at an event and you need to send out a, a message last minute and you haven't uh, created a group for those people, but you do have a list of people that are in attendance or um, that are on an attendee schedule. And uh, you could upload that list into our appointments and it would uh, immediately send them a text. Um, we have a birthday text module, which uh, with Chambers, we've seen them start using it as anniversaries. Um, so anniversary text, offering that to a sponsor to let them sponsor that text. Um, and this is an automated campaign. So once it started, um, not much to do there except add the new birthdays as you get new members. Um, and then if any of you are familiar with 10 DLC and the difference between the short code, those five digit short codes and um, using like a 10 digit long code, your uh, actual office number or landline number. Um, so this is something that we're being proactive about moving our users over to 10 DLC because uh, we kind of see the writing on the wall with the carriers and, and they do want people to start moving everybody over from the short codes as we try to get rid of spam and, and figure everything out. It's going to be some time, but um, we have a really low opt-out ratio um, across the board because, um, I mean, statistically, I can't guarantee it, but I can say that it's it seems to be that it's because of the organizations we work with. If you think about membership-based organizations, they're going to stay opted in once they realize they can get texts about things that are actually relevant to them, um, as opposed to, um, you know, we all join email uh, programs, or if I'm a member, I'm going to be in some email, but I may not go in and do all the filters. Um, but, you know, in a very short, uh, concise way, if you think about if I'm a, if I play tennis and not golf, I don't want texts about golf. And the same thing applies to any association. If I'm not interested in going to the monthly meeting, but I would like to attend um, the happy hours, then I'm going to opt into that group if that's something you offer to me. Um, so, uh, what I, I think in terms of last things to mention, Amy's getting set up tomorrow. We make this really simple for you guys. So if this is something that you're interested in for your organization, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to set this up and, um, and walk you through and, and talk about use cases further. Um, I do see some... Yes, Louisa County, Virginia. They started, I think, in August. What's her name? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, yes, they just got started. Um, text is great. If you have an option with your... Uh, um, with your backend software, I recommend looking into it and then call me and I'll tell you the difference. Um, our pricing structure is just based on the amount of text you're using. Um, this probably wouldn't apply uh, to some associations, to some it does. Uh, the $99 a month it will be more applicable than, than these annual plans here, just because the associations don't necessarily need this many texts per year. Um, but that's why we've been successful with chambers and um, with associations is just offering you guys plans that, that make sense and no long-term commitment. Um, so I know I'm at like 14 minutes here. Um, I hope I covered a lot of what you guys were interested in, but I will absolutely, like I said, Jacob had sent over some questions. I'm happy to type out some some short responses and share that, and then you guys can share that internally. And if you have questions, just please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly anytime. Awesome. Thank you, David. And uh, that was uh, just a fascinating look at everything. I have so many questions, yeah. um, but, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. And I think, you know, uh, David, what, what we were feeling challenged with is we were, you know, trying to look at this piece and this component. Uh, and that's why Robin, I'm, you know, want to be able to follow up with you about it is what does that look like from somebody on the communication side and translating it from, how we think about email and how we think about written communications and, and all of that stuff and trying to have that mindset shift. What tools and analytics do you look at that are the same ish for SMS versus, um, you know, those other communication mediums. So uh, I think it's fascinating and uh, so excited to be able to, you know, kind of explore some of these ideas further. So um, one of the first things that I would like to do is just kind of go through the chat because we had some questions come in. Um, some of them, I think, got answered along the way. 
Um, but one of them, I think, came in from Wendy. Not sure if it was answered, but Amy, it was when you were talking, said your orientation is also um, all online with your uh, learning management system. In my orient, oh, no. So I was trying that and I was trying to convince Bill that we should do that, but we went back to the uh, old fashioned method. But I was I was trying it because I put together this like 350 page PDF and I was like, what if we did modules in Teachable? So I'm still working on that. But. I saw your placeholder and yeah. I really, because, and of course we've been talking about that Hello, Beckett. The Association <laughs> Management 101 that, that we want to use, and it seems like a teachable or a blue sky, um, you know, would be a perfect place for those quick, short videos to, to live if that's the direction we go. And um, to be able to easily go back and find that one little segment. I mean, even with board stuff, I was like, okay, that would be so great if then they like, okay, the bylaws are right here versus let me find it in that document. And, um, Hey, Wendy, I need to jump off. I'm a couple minutes late for me starting a Zoom, but I really appreciate everybody's time. And I'm going to send an email with the presentation in case you guys want to share it and I'll answer the questions. So y'all have a great day. Thank you Love again. It. Oh, Dobbin, you're going to make me email you my questions? You already sent them. What do you mean? You already sent them. Oh, did you want to do more? No, I really wouldn't jump, but I, I really do have to start this other meeting. I, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Bye. So Amy, I and I want to invite anybody else just to unmute and ask questions as we go through some of the questions in the chat. So um, I would assume, but you know what happens when you assume that you can, you know, choose what to publish. Can you uh, and leave it unpublished? Um, do do you have the ability in Teachable or any of the other platforms we discussed to segment it out to specific members based on certain criteria? What does that kind of look like? The way that I do it right now is like I upload or I just input my students into there. So I'll, I can put in their names, I mean, their emails and set up a password for them. Gotcha. Um, and then so if they were enrolled in multiple courses, they would be able to go log in and see those multiple courses that they're in. But they're like, I have done a couple that are free. I told you we haven't dug into the payment part yet, but if it's a free course, I have a few on there that they can sign up for and be automatically enrolled and have access to that. Awesome, awesome. Um, Amy, for that upload into Teachable for the students, is that like Excel or a CSV or is it just text? It is um, text like five at a time. So it's not super, I mean, my biggest group is like 50. So it just takes like a little time, but it's not too bad. Kelly, how does yours work? Are you, okay. are you so mine is based on an open API. So with, um, I would let you see, and if you want to, I'll let you see. Every event in Novi has a unique identifier. And as part of the open API, you take that open API number and you put it in blue sky and it makes them talk to each other. So if you buy it in Teachable, it I mean, not Teachable, in Blue Sky, it tells Novi. If you buy it in Novi, it tells Blue Sky. So mm -hmm. there's seamless single sign-in, um, single login for both. Um, it it's, goes back and forth. Um, we moved away from Teachable because it's so complex with the state having to do state requirements um we needed more a more complex system and um teachable just wasn't cutting it we do take payments in teachable, teachable currently um but there's no way to take that payment and refer it back to a member mm -hmm. so you just get this block of money from teachable and you don't know where that money came from um so that's that's the advantage of going with something like blue sky it makes your accounting tighter and it makes um it makes it so that if they log into novi and are registered or if they log into blue sky and they're registered it doesn't matter they get to the same link and they log in and they're there does that help 
Very cool. That's awesome. Um, can we, uh, uh, Jacob, do you have more LMS? Because I want to pepper Robin with how they're using text at ACR. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Go for it. We use a, a platform called Textedly. Okay. It's what, what we're using. And the way that we do it, it's an opt-in to receive text messages from us. Mm -hmm. um, I think where we struggle is we feel like we're bombarding our members like all the time, you know, like we've tried very hard to cut down on the number of standalone emails. You know, we're very active on social. We, and, you know, and texting was just part and parcel of all of this. So I think that we, we wish our numbers were larger or more robust in terms of texting. Um, but we do try really hard not to um, overuse it. Because I think that we could, we would have the tendency to do that. Because I think that we feel like we got to get it out. We got to tell them every place that we possibly can, and we don't want to miss anything and that sort of stuff. So it it's fairly new to us. I think we've been doing it for about a year and a half, um, and we just kind of really walk a fine line with it. And you know, and in ACR, we're you know we're we're such a large organization staff wise that. And our communications department is large. I mean, you know, I get on these calls and I feel a little guilty because so many of y'all are having to wear so many different hats. And we're fortunate in that we've got people that can wear all those hats, right? So the texting piece of it does not fall under my purview. Um, but I do push out the messaging saying, hey, opt in to receive text messages from us. So again, I kind of feel like we're still sort of newbies to it. Um, and again, we walk a fine line with with trying not to anger people and make and and oversaturate, you know. And I think that probably everybody on this call can say they feel the same way because you don't want you don't want to oversaturate, and then people are opting out of everything you're doing, and then you're not getting your messages out to anybody. So, some of my questions, and uh, I'll ask you, Robin, since David left, um, is. You know, and he spoke to it a little bit, but the ability to segment your audience, I, I, I would assume that exists, at least in some or partial format. But are you running, um, to your knowledge, like any specific campaigns and can you segment out those campaigns? Um, you know, maybe it's registration for an event or donate to this. Do you do you have that kind of capability or have experimented with it yet? From, from a texting perspective or just mm -hmm. in general? From a texting SMS. That's a really good question. And again, it doesn't fall under my to-dos, um, but the person that does manage the texting piece of it, I can find out. Um, I have not had the opportunity to get in the platform that we utilize and see you know, how robust it is. I'm not really entirely sure what plan level that we're on because you know a lot of times things you know based on how much you're willing to pay for it you get that many more bells and whistles um but let me find out and i can i can follow up with the group with just how much we're utilizing what's available i like how david's one i mean you could text in like all those different things you were interested in at the club i mean i was like imagining like in gsa world like you text in the different sigs that you want to be part of and then you get messaging specific to those SIGs. And from ABC's perspective, I was imagining it like event specific, you know, for registrants for specific events, um, but then also like specific committees um, or like our young professionals group kind of different little. Well, and for GSAE, I mean, our sole delving into text has been with Expo Auctions mm -hmm. because um, Tony has that very robust system where as soon as you're registered as a bidder, you know, not only are you being told when a price goes up or down, or if you're bidding on something that goes up, does not go down on the bidding. Um, but the fact that you've won and, and we found, I mean, that responsiveness because it's event-based and people are interested whether they're about to spend money and about to win something, mm -hmm. um, so, so I, I need to ask Tony what system they're using. And Amy, I think Tony reached out to Austin in your office because Austin was looking for it for one of his volunteer roles. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I'm I'm curious if you know David's company or another one was was part of what Tony's program is. But I just think it's cool. I would never want to be doing it right now because y'all political texts are just kicking my tail. 
I can say that by the time this recording goes out, but it's a lot. And so Robin, I, I, I would, I would be wary too, because I'm just inundated right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try it like next week at our board retreat. Like I just, um, I'm going to sign on with him for a month. Um, it's no contract. And so you do a month, I'm importing all their names and I'm going to do simple things like the reception starts in 10 minutes in Reynolds ballroom mm -hmm. or like we're, we do a breakout and then be like time to come back from the breakout. It's like, just try little things like that. Just to like kind of make them guinea pigs and then be like, Hey, what do you guys think? How would members feel about this kind of stuff? Like receiving these kind of updates. And I'm going to try some of the survey functionality in there. That seemed interesting. Um, so. We'll see. <laughs> and I and I guess it's platform specific, but one of the things that I thought about, and this may just be me, but like uh, the text to sign up for a committee and which committee and all that stuff. I and this is just ignorance of SMS communication platform is like I could see so many things going wrong where that deck doesn't actually translate into what you wanted to have happen or to be able to identify. So like I was wondering through his or any other platform, like, could you just send them to a easy to use mobile version of a form where, you know, you get them to do that stuff. It would write back to their platform, hopefully with some integration, right to your, you know, AMS. But um, that, that was just something that I was curious about. Um, yeah. It goes into the text world and no one looks at it then later. <laughs> well, I, I'm terrible at texting and I often get one letter wrong. And then it auto corrects to something that, you know, I did not intend. And so um, there's a joke there, but I won't say it. So, um, yeah, I, I just I could see that going wrong. And then, yeah, then you end up having to field more member complaints than one wants to. So. I'd also the alternative be for me was sorry. I'll, go ahead, Owen. Uh, I'd also be interested to see just the demographics of who's actually using it or the timings for it too, because I think that would be a, I know with, we use MailChimp and that gives a lot of demographic information as well as timing or when people open, what they're opening, what they're clicking on. So if there's multiple things in the text, what would the tracking be like on that? I was just going to say, we were going to try just a group me at that board retreat. And then I was just envisioning like, a group is at the bar at 2 a.m. and they send a group me text and everyone's like pissed that they got that. So this way, at least it's a way for me to send messages and not everybody else. <laughs> so. This was very cool, Jacob. I, I feel, Dan, I, I feel a laundry list of things we want to learn more about. Um, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I agree better be simple. Hey, Tripp, since you're texting um, or chatting with us, I need to take a photo. Will you come on camera? Or are you going to tell me now? Hi. Thank you. And, and as usual, there you go. Oh, look how good you look on that nice background. You should take a headshot right there. <laughs> All right. So as usual, we're going to make sure that I can do this snippity snip and y'all are gonna have to hold it and wave for you know 10 minutes and and yeah just just keep doing it there we go oh that's good y'all look so awesome all right now you can let let it go <laughs> you know, I, I actually have to go this has been awesome thank you for the information thanks everyone for joining uh Hopefully you heard some good ideas. Uh, Robin, Kelly, Amy, I'll be following up with all of you. <laughs> so, but thanks so much for uh, engaging in the program today. And I hope that we'll have the opportunity to do this again in the future, so.